Hey everybody, we are live. I am live on YouTube, on on Facebook, on TikTok, and I think even on Twitter, which is amazing because I don't think I've ever made a tweet in my life. So going live is kind of novel and unique. If you're watching this on TikTok, I'd advise you to jump over to YouTube. It'll be much better viewing because here's what I have planned today. I'm going to talk about the foundational layers to have an amazing agility career. And you're going to go, oh, well, I, I just want to just have fun in agility. So I don't, I know you're a world champion, Susan, so I don't have to get all the nuances like you do. Well, let me just share with you. If I never step foot in an international competitive arena again, I would still do all of these layers. Why? Number one, safety for my dog. Putting in the, all these layers will make agility far safer for your dog. Putting in all these layers will also make it a lot more fun for you and a lot less frustrating for you, for your dog. So I'm going to talk about what those layers are, what they look like. I've got my puppy here. She's 14 weeks old. I'm going to attempt to do some demos for you of what some of that foundation looks like, but she's 14 weeks old. So who knows? So I'm going to start with a question for you all. Um, if you're watching this on TikTok, it's going to be backwards. I apologize. I, I, I started it backwards. All right. So this is a sequence. This is your dog. You all have a pink dog. Here's your dog. And it's uh, three or two jumps, jump, jump, tunnel. That's your sequence. So it's a straight line from the start line. Jump from where your dog is. Jump, jump, and into the tunnel. One, two, three. My question is, do you see the letters along the side? a b c d e f where would you give your tunnel cue at a as soon as you release your dog or at f just before the tunnel or any letter along the way and i would like you in the comments to let me know what your experience level and agility is so you might put like um a and i'm very experienced or g ah, there is no g susan d and um, I'm in my second year in agility training, um, you know, or, you know, I, I'm on a world team or I'm, you know, just in local classes. Okay. So I would love to see your comments. And we've got some D's, some F's. Uh, and so I've got, and, and thank you. So one person put their trainer, one person uh, put, they're, they're uh, have never trained agility and they're putting it in a D. Um, so we have, I see some lots of D. I, I think we've got every letter so far. Uh, I feel like, um, what are those called? Um, like a, 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 a barter or like an auctioneer. Do I have an A? Do I have an A? Do I have an E? Do I have an F? Um, so. Daniel McDonald. Yes, I know you've been doing agility for as long as I have. Okay, so the question I have for you is if this is a sequence, you're running with your dog, one, two, three, straight line, when will you give your dog the cue for a tunnel? What letter will it happen at? Okay, for those of you on TikTok, I strongly advise you jump over to YouTube and it's youtube.com forward slash dogs that is is the um, URL. All right. So a lot of a lot of different answers. And I'm going to tell you that the correct answer depends. And it really depends on how you've trained your dog, dog's foundation. And I'm going to share with you um, that I if I was running this with my dog, it wouldn't matter if I ran with one of my dogs that has been at the world championships or my two year old who has never been in a trial. I would give the tunnel cue at exactly the same place for all those dogs. OK, so I'll just show you one more time. So you everybody joining late can see where at what letter would you give the cue for the tunnel? At what letter? A through F. OK. So, um, and, and honestly, it shouldn't depend on the dog. It shouldn't depend on their experience. It shouldn't depend on, it should 
only be dependent on your system. So in agility, we have handling systems, things that um, people rely on to get their dogs around a course. In agility, you've got to think of agility like a dance. So you are the lead as the handler, and you are guiding your dog to the correct um, path. And I just uh, say, said the big, big giveaway to agility success is how we do things differently in our program. Our handling system is called Handling 360, and we rely on paths. So you notice I did a dotted, dotted lines here. So every X is a stride for the dog. So they get out of their sit, they take one stride, two stride, leave their feet, land, and then they put in another stride, leave their feet, land, they put another stride and then they're going to be um, going into the tunnel. Okay. So what we do that is different than anybody else on the planet. Now we've been doing this way for 14 years and there's more and more people who are now joining us. We don't teach our students to cue obstacle names as much as a path. So the path that leads the dog up to and tells the dog where they're going next. So obstacle number two in our system, it would be a cue that would tell the dog, we're not making any soft turns. We're not going off to this jump here. We would be going, my, our dogs would know back here that when they went over that jump, that they would be going straight, all right? Because it's a path. And it gives the dog information super, super early. That's number one. Number two, I have students, this, this weekend is European Open. Woo, woo, it starts today, actually. European Open. And we have students from Handling 360 that are competing at the, at the European Open. We also have students in Handling 360 that their venue is AKC. They don't venture out of AKC. So there are things that they don't need that they are doing at the European Open. However, all of those handlers do the foundations the same way, exactly what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. And they all will have the advantage of queuing those paths. So if you are like some of our, our, our students that are at the European Open, super fast runners, young, fit, really fast, they are going to be able to be very close to their dogs where others like myself, I mean, I'm 61 years old, but I got to tell you, I started my agility career in my late twenties. I, I wasn't faster than any of my dogs back then. And here I am, you know, 30 some odd years later, I'm definitely not faster than any of my agility dogs now. And so if you're a handler like me, you rely on the dog understanding the path. So let's get back to this example. If I just said to my dog, this obstacle name, and it's called a jump. And when I tell you to do this jump, then sometimes we might be turning. Sometimes you might be going straight. Sometimes you might be coming back this way. A jump has one meaning. And so if I'm way back here and I say jump, my dog's going to go, well, there's a tunnel here. That's probably what we're doing next. But what if we were doing this? What if that was our obstacle number three, the backside? We need a cue that would then say, we're not moving straight after this obstacle. We're veering off in the direction of the handler. Do you guys see what I mean by a path? Therefore, it's super important. Many people will tell you, say tunnel back in C and D. But we will not do that. We will give a cue that tells the dog what path they're taking. And when they land at E, we will then say, now we're taking this obstacle. But guess what? The tunnel has many names too. If I say tunnel, it means go straight after. If I say another cue, it's going to mean take a soft turn. Don't look at what's ahead of you. Maybe there's a tunnel right after the tunnel. But don't look at it because I gave you a cue that is a path to and beyond. And so handling agility this way brings such clarity to the dog. There's no barking and looking up at you. There's no questioning. There's no spinning. 
And the great news is for those of us who are not that fast, we level the playing field with those super fast sprinting people because we don't have to be there. Our dogs understand the path. All right. Do you guys all understand me? So if, if this is making sense to you and you'd like to mo know more about how we teach that, give me, give me some hearts. All right. Uh, let me know. It doesn't matter if you're brand new to agility, if you're just like have an interest in dog agility, but you've never really started the training. You're going to learn a lot today, or you could be somebody who has been training agility for 10 years, but you haven't had the success you want, or your dog is just so frustrating to you because they're so fast in the sport and they, it's like, they've got this quick trigger and all of a sudden they're taking all these obstacles and you can't remember what's, what, what's going to happen next. So if that's you, it doesn't matter where you are on your agility journey. You could be a 25 year veteran, a 30 year veteran like myself. And if you're a lifelong, if you identify like I do as a lifelong learner, you're going to learn something here today. I promise you that. Okay. So let's look at what does the foundational layers of agility look like? And the first layer, which people who come into handling 360, it, it, here's what happens is we help coach them and we say, you know what you are, you're needing more intensively that first layer. So we are going to give you the opportunity to put your membership on pause for a few months and go back and we're going to help you maybe suggest recallers to build that first layer. And that first layer of all of the greatest agility teams in the world, the first layer of you being a novice agility handler, having success and fun and very little frustration. That first layer is having an amazing relationship with your dog. All right now what does that look like it's things like having a great recall having what we call reinforcement zone where the dog will stay on your side because in agility we're, we don't want to trip over our dogs who keep cutting our paths and i'm going to get my puppy out in a second and i'm going to show you it starts with our games like it's your choice in crate games and then value for reinforcement zone and then it's um drive we need a dog with drive so some people come into handling 360 and the dogs really need more confidence and so we we will then help them sometimes we can do it all within h360 and help build the dog's understanding of of drive for the toy or drive for the food it's the the ability to go back and forth between food and toys and then the last layer in that under the relationship umbrella is we start to introduce verbal cues here. I want my dog because I need my dog to, when I say seesaw, that they don't look to take a tunnel, even if the tunnel's right ahead of you. That's not what I heard. They can, they can flip because they're listening in drive. And we start that in that foundational level. So I'm going to get my puppy out right now. And, um, I'm going to switch cameras. I'm going to turn my microphone around. So I'm hoping you all hear this. Those of you on TikTok, honestly, I would encourage you to jump on over to uh, youtube.com forward slash dogs that, okay? Because otherwise you're gonna miss out on the demos. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and help you out here, but okay. So I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna uh, change my camera up. So let me go to, here we go. My camera, let me just see. Boom, look at that, there's a puppy in a crate. Then I'm going to turn my microphone around. I just have to remember to turn all this back after. And those of you on TikTok, I'll do what I can to help you out, but I strongly advise you going over and watching this on YouTube. Okay, TikTokers, you're on the floor there. There we go. Let's see if we can see. Okay. So I'm going to get this puppy out. She actually has never been loose up here. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to close up this gating and I'll start with her on leash. You're super cute. You're super cute. There we go. 
see what this looks like. Good girl. Break. Nice. Okay, we're not going to play with that right now. We're not playing with that yet. No, we're not playing with that right now. No, we're not. Play with this toy. Play with this toy. So, I've got cookies in this bowl. I got cookies in the bowl, but I want her to talk with this toy. <clears throat> Yes, I need you to talk about the toy. Now, I think I can take this leash off her because I think she's going to work with me. Thank you. So, taking it out when I ask her. Now, she's like, oh, I've never been up here. Let's tick tock. B. Yeah, that's it. So, it's understanding a cue that means one thing down and a cue that means something else. That's just understanding our verbal cues. Understanding control. <laughs> There's cookies in the bowl. Where's our self-control? Our little 14-week-old puppy. That bad. Good. Good. And she really wants those cookies. <laughs> Can you down? Good. She wants the cookies, but I say, tug. Oh, you got me. 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 So it's having drive for food, drive for reinforce or, or for cookies equal. She really would prefer the cookies. There's no doubt about it. Thank you. So if I put the toy like that, tug. she waits until she's released. Uh, 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 uh. Thank you. So if I throw, put a cookie on the ground like this, this is going to be a difficult one. Tug. Yay, good baby. You started it off pretty good. Put it back in the bowl. Tug. Yeah, so good, so good. So good, so good, so good. Thank you. Search. Nice. That's the way we do it. That's the way we do it. Okay, so it's having a puppy that understands or is starting to understand words, words in drive. So tugging and then thank you, boom, we drop it. And then sit, come on over here, try it again, and sit. <laughs> she learned this one two days ago, so she really likes this one. B, <laughs> come here, sit, go ahead, sit, nice. <laughs> Sit. Nice. That's better. Break. Sit. Believe. Believe. Sit. Good. Nice. Break. Good. Sit. Nice. Break. Down. Nice. Good baby. Good girl. Okay, so that is our first layer. It's ongoing. It's not just like, oh yeah, she can do this, we're moving on. That's so good, that's so good. Thank you. So good. Okay, now, also an important one. Obviously, you can see we've worked on her recall. She listened pretty well, even though this is a new environment. But another super important thing is that they understand the value isn't out here. The value happens back here. The baby. Nice. B. Nice. Come on, B. Good girl. Super good. Super good. That's called reinforcement zone. Break. I didn't have a toy. Let's get this one. Let's get this one. Eight. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. Ready? Okay, come here. Yes, good baby. Good, super good baby. Yay. All right. So. That is, that is 
level one. That is, oh, I got to change my camera back. Boom. Okay, so that, does, does everybody see how that relates to dog agility? Does everybody see the connection between having a dog who you ask them to do something and they do something? This is a, a 14 week old puppy. So we've had her for five weeks and she's already got those foundational layers growing. There's nothing that we're checking off. We've already got them growing and you're never done. The things that I just showed you, I'll still keep doing with my dog who goes to the world championships. All right. So level one relationship ongoing. It's, it's a part of the fabric of everything we do in handling 360. We don't say, take a dog who's distracted and say, come on, we can teach them agility. Come on, let's just get them, get them back here. Give them a little time out. They weren't focusing. No, no. It's about the dog giving you consent to move forward with your agility training by being keen and focused to work with you. I got it. Yeah. Come on, do this. Let's do this. Yeah. Come on, let's go. All right relationship. And so when you join Handling 360, that's the part we work on first. And we do it as part of our, what we call prep school. And if, as we're coaching you through prep school, we see that there's some tr troublesome areas, what we do is we approach you and we say, look, your choice, we can keep coaching you, but we suggest you put a pause in H360 and we want to help you just get, work on that relationship to get your dog more keen, more focused, more balanced for food and toys, more working with you. And, and there are some of our H360 students who do all of it with just food, but we work on using food toys, um, food pouches and things like that. Okay, next layer, fitness and body work. So that is number one, injury prevention. Number two, it makes things like tight turns so much easier. But the biggest thing is having a, a dog who understands how to use their body so that they don't fall off things, so that they stay safe and have a very long, healthy agility career. So there's all different, different fitness exercises that we encourage people um, to do. Um, and that we is more in our Agility Nation membership area, okay? And then you move, once you've got um, some fitness under your belts, and I've already started that with a the puppy, then we move to what is called flat work. And there's a lot of people that teach flat work. Yeah, um, flat work would be, you know, most people will tell you, yeah, we're doing flat work today in class. What we do and why we are different is because we're known for our dog training. We are, I mean, if I'm going to brag, I will brag that we're world renowned for our dog training. People from all, countries all over the world come to us because when they have a dog training problem that other people can't fix. And so the dog training that we do in flat work is very different. We shape behaviors. So it's a part of what the dog understands. Like the little puppy, she got confused with um, not offering the sit, but she's 14 weeks old. She learned her down two days ago. Pretty darn good understanding of sit versus down after just two days of work. We don't use food lures to get that because if we did, you, you notice I didn't drop my hand anywhere when I asked her to sit her down. So that same way of going is how we teach fundamental flat work. And what is flat work? It's where you as a handler learn all the handling moves, how to turn your shoulders, how to use your hips, when to run forward, when to slow down. You know, some of our students are, are you know, less physically able to do some of these moves. So it's all done at their speed. We teach you that, but then we need to teach the dog to be able to respond to your motion. All right. So flat work is done with virtually no equipment, maybe a traffic cone, um, maybe near the end of flat work, we introduce one jump, but it is just all about teaching the dog how to be successful so that when they, you know, so many people, oh my gosh, because agility is such a popular sport, you will see agility schools all over the world that go, oh, dad, we got your money. Come on in. Let's get your dog on the equipment right now. O-H-E, double hockey sticks, no, no. Thank them for their time and get out of the building. 
We want to teach understanding before performance. Understanding must come before performance. And that's how you get a dog who enjoys the sport. That's how you get a handler who enjoys doing it with their, with their dog. Understanding comes through flat work, through the many layers that I've already shared with you. Now we've got a dog who's ready to progress to the next stage where we, we, we're doing all those skills we learned on flat work. And basically, almost every handling maneuver you're going to need for agility, you've learned it in flat work. We now put it in with one jump, then with two jumps, then with three jumps. And you learn how to work as a team. Because as I remember, up from the top, I talked about agility is about teamwork is about that dance you're leading in that dance and so we need to do it now with the obstacles present so how far along are you probably months into your agility training if you want to have fun longevity and happiness in this sport you're going to take months doing the the foundational layers because then the sexy stuff the doing the obstacle stuff the stuff that everybody wants to get to that sexy stuff happens so easy, so easy for you and so easy for your dog, right? You get there coming in with confidence, that dog going, yeah, what's next? I got this. this is some, like that little puppy that I just showed you. What's next is what she says to me every time I take her out to train. That I got this. This is fun. What's next? All right. So. We then do what we call it's the blueprint for everything you will ever need. It's a separate classroom in Handling 360 blueprint for all of the combinations that you'll ever see in agility, but we just learn them as one offs. All right. So we're going to do a serpentine with these three or five obstacles. We're going to, we're going to do some backside. We're going to do some backside blinds. We're going to do some backside pull throughs. We're going to do a double throttles, all these things you're going to do in the blueprint after you've done all those other layers coming forward. Now we're a team, right? You get through that and now you are an agility team, but we've got to start doing things at speed. But here, as, a, as somebody who's been coaching people in the sport of agility for more than 25 years, here's what I've listened, learned. If you get a dog and you get them doing things at speed and a handler who's trying to run to catch up, it's a bad combination. It's back when I used to ride horses. You never wanted to put a green horse and a green rider together. And so what we've done to circumvent that problem is we've got a, we call it our triple double classroom. So what we've got is a series of sequences. I think there's like 25 different lessons in there where the dog is going super fast, but the handler doesn't have to move very far. The handler just has to focus on being a team, getting the words out, getting their handling moves down pat. And once you get through that, there is no course you can't do in agility, but yet we don't go, well, yeah, let's just go and do courses now. Why don't you sign up for, for a trial? Because what we want to do is make sure your confidence stays at an all time high. So, you know, you can be doing this right now. You take any course, you can find them on Facebook all the time. Judges post their courses. And then you walk and say, I can do the first five. I think I can nail these first five. And you might say, I can only nail the first three. You stay at a course of three or you stay at a course at five until you can nail any course in, in groups of five obstacles. That's your number. And that's how we grow our students' confidence. I'm, I'm giving you guys a kind of a peeled back look into what we do when we're coaching our students. There's a lot of you might be watching this going, well, I go to weekly agility class well, you, it is impossible to learn all this going once a week. It is, I am being bold here, impossible. It's impossible to learn all this going anywhere once a week. And that's why it's so important that you're doing this training at home. And in an online environment is the best way to do it. Even better than if you could come and get lessons from me privately once a day online much better why because you can see what i'm doing you can you know after this live is done you can go back and rewind and watch my mechanics with my puppy you can see what i do when she didn't get it right when you're in a one-on-one -on -one private lesson even with an elite agility coach you can't remember everything when you get back home 
That's why an online classroom allows you that opportunity to go back, watch the video again, video yourself, compare that video to yours, post your videos for the coaches, myself and my coaches to give you feedback, right? So now you've gone all the way through to the final class, which is coursework. And coursework is where we help you focus on memorizing courses, getting your mental game right. How do you uh, uh, walk, step to the line with great confidence? What, is, what are the, the, tricks, the, the, the tips and tricks to get your dog focused and together with you when you step to the line? And, and, and we're at a place where we're running courses. Now, I haven't mentioned you teach your dog to weave or you teach your dog a seesaw because that's separate from all of this. That is what I would call other obstacle independence. We've got all of that in Agility Nation, our membership. So uh, if you aren't aware, we have a, right now it's my birthday week. And so we have all of our programs open. And one of the opportunities that we have for people is to join Handling 360 in a bundle with Agility Nation. So you could kind of do them together. You could be teaching your dog weave poles and contacts, but taking your time growing through the fundamentals of relationship building and then your flat work and then your your one, two, three jump skills and growing up your mental game and all of that. So you could be doing that together, but never be combining the lessons. You never want to get somewhere where somebody says, hey, welcome to Agility 101. We're going to start by putting your dog on a seesaw tonight. And then we're going to get you handling a little mini course at the end. Oh, nay, nay. Oh, nay, nay. That's either people who don't understand the education process for a human being. They don't understand how important foundational la la layers are for agility. And when I talk to these people who have these schools, they say to me, oh, Susan, it's, um, it's what they want. I'm just giving them what they want. Well, if we are doing the best by our students, we are giving them what they want, which is fun with their dog, which is seeing their dog do impressive skills while we're giving them what they need, which is a very strategic and intentional layering of confidence and skill. Confidence and skill, super important. Does that make sense to you guys? Just give me a shout out in the comments if it makes sense. And those of you on TikTok, I can't believe that uh, you're still hanging in there. Um, I guess you got to see the demo pretty good. All right. Does that make sense? Is there any questions about, about those layers? Yeah. So many puppies, so many young dogs get scared when people try to push them in their agility journey. Mary says, let me see, give me a, a, a hell's yeah. If it makes sense to you that layers of learning happen in anything we do with our dogs. It doesn't matter if you just, if your, your goal is I want to have an amazing family pet. That's where we have our recallers program and we, we do layers of learning to have this amazing family pet. It doesn't happen in big chunks and lumps because that's when you get a dog that, that gets put off by the training. That's where you get a dog who starts avoiding the training. Unlike my puppy, it's when I, when I'm training her downstairs, she doesn't want to come back upstairs. Wait, 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 wait we're not done yet. It's only been 15 minutes. What are we doing? All right. So many people just get agility obstacles and then start holding classes. Guys, protect your confidence, protect your dog's confidence, and don't put you yourself or your dog in that kind of situation. Yes, at some point you need to have, you need to have access to all the agility equipment, but in Handling 360, that doesn't happen for months, six or seven months. All you need is a couple of jumps maybe a tunnel or two at the most, but you can still get by with just a few jumps and a tunnel. You can get all the way through the relationship building, the, the, the flat work, the blueprint with only a few jumps. You can do it at home and you're growing your dog's confidence. Even if you never wanted to step foot in the agility ring, you will be having fun learning something that your dog loves. All right. Okay. Um, so the, oh yeah, I'm going to go here. Hold on guys. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a URL that you can go and check out what exactly handling 360 is. And I'm going to say it one more time. Handling 360 
is where you move, you learn all the handling moves. I'll show you a little video. Okay. So this is a video of um, myself and my dog in Sweden. The last time the world championships were held actually. Um, okay. So let me just show you. Uh, where is, uh, hmm. I'm sure I put that up here. Somehow it's disappeared. Okay, I'm going to add another one. So um, this was from from the, actually this one was 2018. 2019 was our last world championships, wasn't it? So this video clip I'm gonna show you is um, from 2018. It was just happened to be the, the first one I came to when I, when I opened my, my um, videos here. Okay, so I'm going to show you this video. And what I want you to focus on is the communication between my dog and I, number one. Number two, I want you to focus on, this is the world championships, but I want you to focus on my level of stress versus my level of relaxation at the start line. Okay, so world championships, people from all over the world are watching me, but it's important to do your best that you're relaxed and connected with your dog. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this. And you guys on TikTok, I don't know that you're gonna do take off and trust that she'll do her job. Getting ahead, but then waiting. Okay, so that is, that's the teamwork that I'm talking about. That's where, where you're headed. That's where you're headed when you're entering agility, even if it's your first classroom, even if you have zero, de zero desire to compete, it's about growing that relationship with the dog. It's about growing your teamwork. Okay. So if you want to learn more, then you can go to, um, wait, I've got the long, wrong. There we go. Go to dogs .com forward slash celebrate. You're going to learn all about uh, agility nation there. And that's where I strongly encourage you to to start. And yes, um, is, Julia asks, is this something you can be doing with an older dog? Absolutely. Absolutely. The flat work, the foundation, the relationship, it, a five and six year old dog. Absolutely. It will blow your it will blow your mind how it changes, how you, the two of you communicate together, because, yes, we get our dogs to understand the difference and respond to the different verbal cues we give them. However, we also get them to understand our body motions and our movement forward and backwards. Okay. Um, so, so um, absolutely. It's great for any age dog. Okay. TikTokers. I thought I just dropped you a little bit. Okay. Any other question? And so if I was doing a sequence like this one, I, I put out at the beginning, here's what I would say. Here are the cues I would give my dog. I would say jump on, uh, on as a release. That would be her release from the start. I would say jump as she was landing at the first X at point number C, I would say jump. And by saying jump at point C, she would know without a shadow of a doubt 
that she is probably going to be told to go in the tunnel because the word jump means just power as fast and as hard as you can forward. Now, if I wanted this obstacle out here, then I would give her a different cue at, at, at C. I wouldn't give her a jump cue. I would give her a soft turning cue. To my dog, it's this sound. So she would know, back here, she would know, I am not taking this tunnel. No way I am taking the tunnel. I'll be turning towards wherever my handler is, and I would obviously be on this side. And then to get her to the back side of C, a back side of three, as she's landing at E, I would now be saying a cue like, which tells her, don't take the front of that jump, take the back. Because remember, we are cueing the dotted lines. We're not cueing obstacles. The obstacles are part of the path. We're cueing the path, right? So it's a language that is between you and your dog and it tells the dog, so the dog doesn't have to look back at you, huh? Do I, I take this jump, but then I, what do I, we're going that way. I was gonna go in the tunnel. No, my dogs know way back an obstacle before that we're not going to the tunnel. I, I don't even give them the name of the next obstacle, but by saying it's a soft turn, they know, oh, okay, tunnel's out of play. I'm softly turning. Am I taking the front of the jump or am I taking the back of the jump? Okay, that makes sense. Do you need the ability to video yourself and have social media accounts? So you do not need social media accounts. We do have a Facebook group, but it is 100% for social reasons. Our, we have an independent, we built our own educational platform. We built our own classrooms. And so you do not need any social media access at all in order to be a part of Handling 360. We do encourage everyone to buy a tripod and have some sort of a camera. It could be a phone, it could be a GoPro, it could be a drone, some form of a camera so that you can video your training because we are humans and we're patterns uh, of habits. That's we are. We are a collection of habits. And if you are not videoing your training, I video every single, single day when I train that puppy, she gets videoed, right? That's how I can go back and go, oh, look what I did here. I said the wrong word here. Oh, I got to get better here, right? And it expedites your training. Things happen so much faster. Okay, I'm going to jump off, guys. If you would like to know more about Handling 360 and Agility Nation, Agility Nation is the membership where we teach all of the skills like weaving and seesaw and contacts. We deep dive a little bit more into the mental game, a lot about fitness and body work for both you and your dog. That's in the membership. But Handling 360 is a series of classrooms. You go through one classroom, you move on to the next. And we coach you all the way through so that we are helping you to bring out the best in your dog while we bring out the best in you. Okay. Okay. So go to dotthat.com forward slash celebrate. Are there any questions for me there, Kim? And when you get to dotthat.com forward slash celebrate, there actually is a, um, a live chat if you want to speak to one of our coaches personally, and, um, and they can answer questions about the program in more detail. And also, if you would like to know more about the programs that we have during our celebration event, it, they'll all be there on the classrooms. Okay, so um, those of you in TikTok, you lasted. Wow. Good on you. And we'll see you guys, hopefully, as members of Handling 360.